This episode is proudly supported by Powerhouse Parramatta. Powerhouse Parramatta is set to open in 2025 and is looking to feature the very best in hospitality and attract operators to help redefine their food and beverage retail and catering. This incredible opportunity for potential operators includes retail food and beverage, in-house residential catering, events, powerhouse food, and other hospitality opportunities. The food program will be a world first for a cultural institution. Powerhouse invites all interested food and beverage operators to a briefing on Tuesday the 8th of August to learn more about the opportunities. For more information and to register your interest, go to powerhouse.com.au. I suppose I'm excited about seeing the finished product because then I can make up my mind what the direction that I want it to flow into. Um, terrified, I just want to, I want to know that I've got the right people in place to to execute it, whether it is an eatery or a, or a restaurant. This is the fifth episode in our special series, The Long and Short of Opening a Restaurant. We're following the journey of renowned chef and restaurateur Martin Burtz. He's moved home to Brisbane and is working towards opening Short Grain, an Asian eatery and food store. Or is it actually a restaurant, Marty? With just over a month until opening, it's time to check in for a progress report. It's been three weeks since we last spoke, Danny, and uh, so a lot's happened in that time. And so today it's nearly the end of July, so it's the 28th of July. Um, and I, so I've made a date that I'd like to open, and that is the 3rd of September. So uh, it was... Um, <laughs> I was really thinking about it and, and things come to me usually either when I first wake up in the morning or when I'm having a shower in the morning. And I just thought to myself, instead of trying to do a service like a lunch and dinner service, then why don't you open on a Sunday when I'm planning on doing like a fun brunch day? So opening at 11, um, going through to 3.30, it's only one service. Um, it's a bit of fun on the menu and, um, and yeah, people can just wander in and, and have a cocktail and have something to eat and, and check it out. So that's what I'm hoping for. Everything still looks like it's on track. Um, and yeah, there's, um, all the fun things are starting to come. All the tiling's been done. It was finished today and, um, all the wooden floorboards in the dining room have gone down and they look spectacular and um all the, the kitchen floor is about to be laid on monday and then santa steel and and joinery comes in next week so yeah there's quite a bit um going on um there's a feature rusted um sort of paneling on the bulkhead well it's not rusted it's being rusted at the moment so the panels are um, being painted so today's the third time that they've been sort of um, had this application put on the steel that it um, rusts it and then it gets a sealant put over that. So, um, yeah, everything's sort of, there's a lot of stuff happening and it's, um, so I'm, one thing that I, <laughs> because obviously this is about being honest and, um, and about, you know, the dilemmas going on in my head. Um, my question to myself and other people that have now walked in once these finishes have been put in and, and pe the few people that I are working with me or um, also that I trust have come in and said, Marty, I think this looks more like a restaurant <laughs> than, an, than an eatery or um, what you sort of are perceiving it or, you know, what you've sort of said that you wanted it to be. Um so yeah, there's. I've had a few sleepless nights about ha having. Well, I still want to sell curries in packets and my sauces and stuff because I just think it is a really wise thing to do, um, and I haven't <clears throat> disregarded the store um, because I I really do want to see the final product. I haven't seen the shelves put up yet um, in that part of the room and. Um, 
and also the big um, front bench that is being brought up from Melbourne that is still um, – that's not in place yet. So I still haven't got a final vision of, of everything, but, yeah, it, it's looking pretty impressive as a, as a room. Um, <laughs> and then David Thompson said to me when we were doing that dinner in Adelaide a few months ago um, – he said, how long do you think the bar, uh, sorry, how long do you think the shop will be the shop before you turn it into a bar? And, um, and I said, oh, maybe, maybe about six months. <laughs> but I, you know, he said, oh, you, you, he said, you're so bloody predictable. And, and I said, well, I'm not, and I don't want to be. Um, but, you know, also on a serious note on that, on that side is that, you know, is the bug is a waiting spot for the dining room going to be more lucrative than um, a store? But what I've thought about in the store is having well, I've purchased this beautiful big round table at seat ten, which can have produce on it on it during the day, and then in the evening um, we can clear it, and it can be a table of ten, and then the store lights can be turned down and make it into like more of a little private dining area, and that table of ten can be booked. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of now that sort of thing rattling around in my head. From the beginning of this project, Martin has been absolutely clear that he's opening a casual eatery and food store, not a restaurant. Restaurants are too serious, too much pressure, way too much work. But does Short Grain have other ideas about what it wants to be? I want it. I mean, the space is big. It's like it's um, well, it's generous in the, in its proportions because it's a warehouse. It's got really high ceilings. Obviously, where the kitchen and, and the bar and everything is, that ha- there had to be a bulkhead put in to hide all the the facilities, all the air conditioning vents and ducts and whatnot, and also the the um, exhaust and and um, yeah, so. Um, it's yeah, it's pretty. It's a, just a a big room, and um, the finishes that I've chosen. Look, I've I've really tried to. You know, I know I have stuck to a budget. Um, I've found some myself. I've purchased some myself, as in I've gone out and looked for them and bought them. Um, so there's touches of me within it. Um, obviously, because I've worked with an architect and a designer, or the architect more for the drawings, and a friend of mine did the, um, some intentional design work. Um, yeah, I, it's considered, and um, and I really um, am proud of that. And but as we're getting closer to an end product, as I said, you know, my friends or people that I'm trusting, and I've got two people coming up from Sydney this week. Um, to uh, just to view it, um, have said, yeah, I think you've given birth to another restaurant. Well, I know that there's going to be judgment whether I do a restaurant, an eatery, or a canteen, or whatever I do, whatever I do, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, it, I think the, the finishes and how it looks in that space because I'm utilising um, well two huge walls, both the you know the side wall and the front wall of the building which are all um original windows and original brickwork that i'm not touching um and then adding you know uh, oak floorboards that are th- long and wide and um and finishes that um are cheap but they within it looks very expensive um so yeah it's changing the look of it to um something that Oh, I'm, I, I love because at, at the end of the day, I've got to be there all the time. So I, I don't want to walk into something that I'm not really, that I don't, that I didn't have a hand in or that I had somebody else design for me that, that I think, oh, I don't really like it, but I, I do really like it and I'm, ha- and I'm happy for it. But um, yeah, is it going to be a restaurant or is, are people going to want it to be that in Brisbane or um, yeah, I'm still, I'm just, fighting with or I'm I'm not fighting with it I'm just I'm sitting with it to see how um it keeps progressing and and what um and what I then think it should be staffing a restaurant is always crucial staffing short grain has been a major concern for Martin Burtz as we get towards the pointy end he shares where things are at and what he looks for when he's assessing applicants I have got nearly a whole kitchen crew 
which I'm really excited about. Um, I have a head chef and I've got a sous chef and I've got some other little ones. Um, and I'm now going to sort of hunt down a really good front of house person. I'm not jinxing myself. I, I think I've, I think I may have one, but I'm not sure. They're still thinking about it. There's some Thai people. Um, another guy, the head chef, he has come from somebody that I trained um, and they'd worked with that the other person for quite some time. So they, um, he is pretty um, clued up on, 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 on Thai food. Um, and I think he really wants to make a mark for himself in um, at short grain. So um, I'm... I'm going to let him run with that, obviously with my guidance. Um, and the other guys, uh, especially the Thai, the Thai people, um, also know what, obviously know what they're doing. So I just have to steer them in the direction of what, how I like things done and, and how I like things to taste. So um, <clears throat> I'm quite confident with that today. Um, and then, yeah, it's about front of house and about um, having those right people in the front. And we've spoken about that before. I think it's really about people knowing what the word hospitality means. And there's so many people out there at the moment that don't, that work in the hospitality industry. It's, it's, it's very disheartening when I, when I see people that just, you know, they're just doing it for a job. It's, it's very, um, yeah, it's, it's not great. Well, I've been really lucky because uh, a lot of, well, um, the head chefs and um, the t uh, two other ones have just come to me because they've known that I'm coming to Brisbane uh, and they wanted to work with me. So <clears throat> that was um, that was really a, um, it was great because they're the two sort of um, key people that I needed um, and they've taken on a lot of responsibility straight off the bat. Um, and they've also sat in with me on, on interviews. Um, so I think um, when, when you're sitting in, in a bit of a group and there's a bit of banter going on, it's just not just me interviewing, there's another person and maybe two other people and, and, when we're, and we're just having a conversation. It's really, um, it just, it, it's not so intimidating for people. And I've really had some really good conversations with the people that we're going to be um, that are going to be working together in the kitchen. So I'm, that's why I'm feeling confident there. I just have to go with whatever happens, and I I don't want to push people anyone into coming to work with me if if they're not feeling a hundred percent like they want to. Um, I suppose that's because I'm waiting for somebody to call me back to say if they want to work with me or not, and I'd really like that person to work with me. <laughs> so I'm really, that's something that, um, I, that is playing on my mind today, um, and it is now after three, and I thought that it might have been, it might have been, my mind might have been eased by now, but it's, um, I'm still waiting. Um, and, yeah, and I, yeah, key people are playing on my mind, key people to make it, make it seamless um they are very important and i just yeah it would be great if this person said yes because that would be um a big tick for my box in a way the completed building will decide what it wants to be martin shares his excitement and terror i suppose i'm excited about seeing the finished product because then i can make up my mind what the direction that i want it to flow into, um, terrified. I just want to. I want to know that I've got the right people in place to to execute it, whether it is an eatery or a, or a restaurant. Um, and I think it can still go. Well, definitely can go either way. Um, I'm confident in in finishing on time. Sort of at in the middle of August. Um, and then I just want to make sure that I can, that I feel confident to open. Well, I feel confident to open on the third with, um, not a skeleton team, but a team that, um, understands the vision and then we can build upon it. 
um, as, as the weeks go on. Um, and it's just going to be a hard work at the beginning. And people, I think anyone who st- opens a restaurant, I think if you've got the right people around you, they will be there as much as you need them until you find other people to, um, to buffer and to take on, take on the load. So I think that is the most important thing. And, and I, and I feel confident in the people that we have, or I have that, um, they're the right people. They, they seem, they, their characters are good. They, they have all got good references and I've checked them. Um, and they all have good work ethic and they're all neat and tidy. <laughs> As opening gets closer, the menu keeps progressing. What ideas are percolating and how do they tie into suppliers, practicalities, the rhythms of the restaurant, sorry, eatery, and the inevitable dietaries? I've got a list of, I've still got a list of um, dishes that I'd like to do. And then we've broken down to like maybe five or six lunchtime dishes that won't obviously go into the dinner menu. But, and then there's a dinner menu. So the lunchtime dishes are more for people that would come in and want something to eat on their own. So like a daily curry with rice and relish in one bowl, which we used, which I used to do at Short Grain years ago, um, which was really popular. And then um, um, a stir fried noodle dish. And um, I found this new Chinese butcher, which is just near um, Short Grain, and he's got a barbecue like a barbecue section. And he um, said that he could do ducks for me in under my specification because I'm not going to go down and do, you know, going to start barbecuing ducks. So um, like a, a dry no- dry egg noodles with um, barbecue duck and um, a black vinegar dressing and deep fried garlic and and green shallots like an like a salad type scenario that I'd like to do. So that could be like a one dish for somebody as well um, and. And then, like, a, um, yeah, another um, dish is like a turmeric wafer filled with caramelised pork and prawns, um, sort of an egg net style. But um, instead of that, instead of being an egg net, it would be a like a um, a wafer, like a crispy wafer made from um, rice flour and um, glutinous rice flour and fresh turmeric and coconut cream. Um, so it is gluten free and there's no egg in it. So it, it crispens up really nicely with the addition of lime water. The lime water helps to crisp the batter. And, um, I think that it would be a really good shared dish for lunch as well. And then it goes into other, like a load of other, um, dishes for that will be on the dinner menu that some of them will be available at lunch and some of them won't. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's still a work in progress, obviously, with the people that will be working in the kitchen. So I can, um, <clears throat> um, yeah, to see what people's um, capabilities are and and um, I don't want to stress people out. So I want to do food that I know that I, I know exactly the recipes and how I want to present it rather than doing things that I'm not sure about. So it'll be things that I feel comfortable with and then and then we can start evolving in, you know, in the next, you know, in the first six weeks. There are so many elements that go into opening a food business. Martin talks about how some of the visible and less obvious aspects of short grain are coming together. I've sort of done a wine list as well and I've had, and I've got wine glasses and I've had them etched with short grain on them. The sign short grain went up on yesterday onto the front, into the like light boxes that have the signage on for the the actual building um so that's visible now um and i found also found a this week i found a really great bookkeeper in in brisbane and she is really keen to start working with us or with me and so that's a really big um that's a big tick for me as well because um that is a big part of you know um, doing pays and um, reconciling invoices and paying um, all of your suppliers and things like that. So, again, I think I, I've said this before and I suppose um, that'll be enough for today, but you really have to, you can't do everything yourself and you really need to find people that you gel with. And I gelled with this person on the phone 
really well um, and told her how I'd worked with um, a, my previous um, person, Kay, who still helps me. And she's not just a bookkeeper, she, she was also um, a bit of a mentor for me. Um, that, um, yeah, I really gel with her and, and, um, just said, look, this is how it worked before. And she said, and when she called me, she said, darling, I can help you. And when she said that she was the right person for me. It's just those, it's just those little things that make you feel more at ease, you know? Um, it's, it's just those little things and it's just one more thing that, um, yeah, you still have to worry and think about, or not, you still have to think about it, but you don't, you certainly don't have to, um, um, you know, worry about, oh, is that the right person or is that not the right person or, or you know, they're going to, yeah, I just, I don't want just a bean counter. They've got to be personal as well. Restaurant budgets inevitably shift as reality and occasional human error come into play. How is the money stuff going at Short Grain? Um, I get scared. I'm like, I have a fear around, you know, money because I'm not <laughs> very good at managing it, but I have, I have actually stuck to my budget and I redid it again, um, two days ago. So there was a mistake made on, um, some tiles, which were feature tiles for, um, three walls in the kitchen and in the dining or in, um, in the bathrooms, um, the wrong tiles were ordered. Not my mistake everyone not my mistake and um and then i had to then go and find another i went and found another i had the time to go and find another tile but the tile that i chose which was in stock was double the price of the one that was originally ordered or not ordered but or well, chosen so anyway i just wore it and i bought them and um and they're stuck on the wall now so <laughs> And they're beautiful. I'm I'm really happy with them. Um, other blowouts. Um, oh, um, that was sort of one thing. And then I well, I to, I think I told you that I bought a piece of art, but I bought that out of I I, I bought that as a birthday present to myself. So it's a a really big piece of art that will hang in the back of the the back and the only wall of the dining room. Um, and the bench that I'm getting from Melbourne, the transport cost, cause I need it to get up here for sort of the next 10 days. Um, the transport cost because it has to come up on a truck on its own is about $12,000. But yeah, it's just all those little things, they all add up. And, um, so I've just have to, yeah, just be careful of those small, those small things. Um, yeah, they're, the, they're, they're sort of the only things I can think of, but there's also things that I hadn't, like I forgot to buy, you know, didn't put down an ice ice maker or ice machine for the bar, so I, I'm going to purchase that. So that's like three and a half thousand. And um, yeah, just a, yeah, a few things that I've missed, um, but it's not, that's probably the other, the other big one is the ice machine that I forgot to buy in the original orders of um, equipment. I, I suppose when we um, when we get to that last part and we open, um, I suppose after the opening and and how it it is received by people um, will be important because I obviously want it to be busy straight off the bat, uh, and also that cash flow that I have in reserve. Um, yeah, that's real. That will be really important too, because, um, yeah, you need you need to cover your costs of, like straight away. Uh, for me, and um, so that you know you're not eating into the reserve that you've got in the bank for you know reserve for a, a rainy day. But so yeah, that's that is on my mind, but it's not in the front of my mind at the moment because there's so many other things going on. <laughs> um, but I, but I am, I am feeling good about still self-funding, totally, 100%. As the short grain project progressed, Martin realised that some of his ideas weren't going to be that easy to realise. He talks about how his vision has changed over the past months. Yeah, I, um, yeah, it was definitely more of a, like a, um, more of a grocery store with a, you know, a large 
um, glass fridge in it, which would have taken up a lot of space. Um, and that fridge would have had to be pristine looking and abundant at all times. I think that would have been a lot of work for one person, like somebody within the, in the, in at Shaw Crane and um, gotten away from the communal dining um, scenario and gone with smaller tables that can be joined together or, or whatever. Um, and yeah, finishes, I, I think I've, I've gone for more high end finishes than, um, yeah, sort of low end basic ones. But look, I've, I searched them out. I, I got some good, I got some good bargains. So, um, I suppose that is where, um, it's ended up looking more like, um, a restaurant than an eatery, but that's okay. That's okay. It's still, it's going to look, it's going to have a really nice impact. And I think people, and when you walk in from like the, in the front door and you walk into a tiled area and then you walk around the corner to beautiful wooden, wooden floors and, and, um, and a beautiful room, I think, yeah, there's going to be definitely two, um, two personalities in one room or two aspects of one room. And I always <clears throat> wanted that, like when you walk into somebody's house, you're walking in, into the kitchen or into lo- like more of an informal area and then walking around the corner into the, maybe an area where it's not formal, formal, but it's, it's just a little bit more dressed up. Um, so I think that, yeah, it's definitely different than my original um, brief in my brain. There's a lot of consideration. There's a lot of consideration there for for the diner or the person that's going to walk in the front door as well. I'm not doing this for my. Well, I'm doing it for me for a business to make to make a living out of. But um, I'm considering the the person or the 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 customers that are going to be walking in the front door. How how they perceive it to be, or how they um, what they would like. And I, I'm not listening to lots of people. I'm, I've, I have got my own ideas, but um, I, I definitely do um, take on board what um, close friends have um, have advised me on, and um, and, and it's been good advice. Um, it, it's not <clears throat> nothing that I haven't not thought about. So um, don't <clears throat> I suppose don't take don't listen to every single person and don't ask too many people. Just ask a few, the few that are really close and you know that they'll tell you the truth rather than an array of people that have all got a different, um, um, have, have all got different opinions on, on how they perceive it to be because it's, it's all about, it's, it's, it's up to you. It's not up to anyone else. It's, it's about if you're not feeling confident in something, it's great to have sounding boards, but you don't have to take that on board. You can, there might be one little thing that they say that you think, oh, okay, yeah, that's a really good idea. And you don't even have to tell them that they'll, it's just something that you just take on board. And then, and then, and then that just, that just slips in, or it doesn't even have to slip in straight away. It might be something that you think, oh, I might do that in the future. Let's just see how that works, how this works first before, because you can, you can change things that can evolve. Um, and yeah, it, it's the best word is evolving rather than trying to do everything straight away because um, you need room to grow and this space definitely leaves you leaves me room to grow. Martin Burtz is moving towards the opening of short grain with excitement, systematic progress, determination and a little bit of terror. Stay with us as we move closer to heating up the woks and throwing open the doors. This is is the long and the short of opening a restaurant. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you.